Hello chemists, so this lesson is about hydrates, okay? And this is sort of an application of what you just learned about finding the empirical and molecular formulas from percent composition by mass. In this case, we actually won't start with percent, we'll start with grams, we'll start with the mass. Um, but you're going to go through similar steps, and again, it's just an, it's an application. We're talking about hydrates. Well, what is a hydrate? Hydrates are solids with a certain number of attached water molecules. So some solids absorb water. Water is attached to the solid, generally. So, for example, NaCl. NaCl is going to have this formula, NaCl times XH2O. X being a certain number of these water molecules. When we write the number in front, that means the number of entire water molecules. So X would be any number. So let's think about a salt shaker, NaCl, right, that's your table salt. So why might someone put rice in a salt shaker? I think you may have seen this before, little pieces of rice in a salt shaker on your table salt for your table. Now let's think about why. Well, you might know that salt, sodium chloride, NaCl, absorbs water. So you also might know that rice absorbs water. Sometimes people, if they drop their phone, in the pool or something, they'll put their phone in a big bucket of rice, right? So rice also absorbs water, okay? So people put rice in salt shakers so that the rice absorbs the water so that the salt doesn't stick and clump up, okay? Well, why might salt stick and clump up and therefore not be able to shake out of the container? Well, that's because salt, NaCl, absorbs water. How much? Well, X, okay? Salt absorbs a certain amount of water that we're going to call X. So the idea of this lesson, and we will also be doing a lab on this, is to figure out, well, how much water? What is this X? We're going to try to find this amount of water. How much water is attached to this compound? Okay, so what percent of a hydrate is water? How much water is there in the hydrate? And it, we can look at percent. That's one of the things we can look at. So the method by which we're going to do this, okay, we'll do practice problems, but again, as I said, we're also going to do a lab, is we'll take the hydrate, okay? We're going to take the hydrate and heat it. This is my nice Bunsen burner, okay? So we're going to heat the hydrate, and often the hydrate, you're going to see these crystals. We're going to use copper 2 sulfate in the lab, okay? You're going to see these nice blue crystals for copper 2 sulfate, so I guess I made this look like water. It's, it's not really. Um... You're going to have these nice crystals, and there's going to be some water in there. We're going to heat it. As you probably know, um, this is like your sweat. It's got salt and water in it. If you heat it, like from the sun, for example, you drive off the water, and you have water vapor, and then you have the salt on your salty skin, for example. So this hydrate will heat over a Bunsen burner. We heat it, and it drives off the water vapor, and you're left with what we call the anhydrous compound. We have this compound left sitting on the bottom, this ionic compound. So anhydrous, and meaning without hydro water. So this compound that has no water in it because the water is now a gas above it. So we want to figure out what percent of water is in a hydrate based on the mass of the compound when we drive off the water with heat. So again, we're going to evaporate the water, and based on the mass of the compound in the beginning, and the mass of the compound at the end, we're going to see how much water is left. So again, the goal is determine the number of water molecules, determine that X, the number of water molecules in the hydrate, and then we can determine the formula of the hydrate. So like NaCl times XH2O, we can actually fill in, in, in the number for that X and find that formula for the hydrate. So how we do this, the first step is we're going to take the mass of the hydrate in the beginning, and then we're going to take the mass of the anhydrous compound at the end. Okay, and when we subtract the difference, we can find the mass of water in the hydrate. So if you start with just this hydrate sitting in a beaker or an evaporating dish, okay, you put it over a Bunsen burner, some of the water is going to leave, well, all of the water is going to leave eventually, and then you'll have this anhydrous compound left in your dish at the end. So if you take the mass of the hydrate in the beginning, minus the mass of what's left at the end, then you'll know how much water must have evaporated from the hydrate. And then by doing a bunch of math, we can determine the number of water molecules 
in the hydrate and figure out that x and find the formula of the hydrate. So here is one practice problem that we're going to do, and I'll read it to you. Washing soda, a compound used to prepare hard water for washing laundry, is a hydrate, which means that a certain number of water molecules are included in the solid structure. Again, water attached to the solid. Its formula can be written as Na2CO3 times XH2O, where X is the number of moles of water per one mole of Na2CO3. You can also think of X as the number of molecules of water per one molecule of Na2CO3. Okay, in this case, we're going to talk about X as the number of moles of water per one mole of Na2CO3. When a 2.558 gram sample of washing soda is heated to 125 degrees Celsius, all of the water is lost, leaving 0.948 grams of Na2CO3. That's your anhydrous compound. Determine the percent water by mass in the hydrate and the experimental value of X to the correct number of significant figures, and then tell what the formula of the hydrate is. So I like to start with drawing a picture. Here we have 2.558 grams of Na2CO3. Let's remember that I got that from here. Okay, we have that, that's the hydrate, Na2CO3 times XH2O. So that's Na2CO3 with a certain amount of water attached. You have 2.558 grams of that in the beginning. Then you heat it to 125 degrees Celsius, which is just the temperature it takes to get rid of all that water. Okay, so you evaporate all the water. That water exists here as a gas, as a water vapor. And then you're left with 0.948 grams of Na2CO3. And that's what's written right here. So of this anhydrous compound left, you have 0.948 grams. So as I said before, the first step is to figure out how much water did you lose? How much water did you lose? So you may remember that from the equation on the previous slide, but if you start with 2.558 grams of water, sorry, 2.558 grams of the hydrate, Na2CO3 times XH2O, okay, I'll write in parentheses, that's your hydrate, okay, and then you subtract 0 0.948 grams of Na2CO3, your anhydrous compound, left at the end, I'll just say at the end, if you subtract those two numbers, you should get the amount of water. So 1.610 grams is the amount of water that's in the hydrate. And it's in the hydrate in the beginning, and then it's the same amount of water that evaporates at the end. So again, if you start with this many grams of the whole thing of the hydrate and you evaporate the water and you're left with this much in the beaker, this much Na2CO3, then this much, much water must be how much you evaporated and that must be the amount of water that is in the hydrate. But now we're going to need to turn grams into, first of all, a percent because it asks us to find the percent water by mass in the hydrate and then we'll need to figure out x. So as it says here, I just put the, the question up here in small, okay, so as it says we have determine the percent water by mass in the hydrate. So how we're going to do that is from the previous slide, as you saw, we have 1.610 grams of water, okay, so we take the part and we divide by the whole. Well, what's our whole amount of hydrate, that is 2.558 grams. So we take 1.610 divide by 2.558 grams. Okay, that's the whole thing. That would be the hydrate. Okay, remember the hydrate contains the anhydrous compound and the water. So the hydrate's the whole. We multiply it by 100 and we'll get the percent. So this is 62.94 percent of water in the hydrate. Okay, 62.94% water in the hydrate. This is like saying what percent of the class is girls. Well, if you take the number of girls 
and divide by the total amount of people, right? That would be like this. Take the number of girls, that's your top, divide by the total amount of people, multiply it by 100 to turn a percent, and you'd get the percent. So this is the same idea. You take one part, the water, divide by the whole thing, the hydrate, multiply by 100 to get a percent, and you get 62.94% water in the hydrate. Now the next step is to determine the experimental value of x to the correct number of sig figs. And then once we get that, we can determine the most likely formula of the hydrate. So we have to figure out x to the correct number of sig figs. And remember that x represents the number of moles of H2O per mole of Na2CO3. Okay, so we got to think about moles. And this is where this is going to be similar to what you did from the last video, which was determining the empirical formula and molecular formula from the percent composition by mass. Okay, in this case, instead of starting with percent and going to grams, we're just going to start with grams. Again, you can start with percent because you have it right here. Um, and then if you subtract that from 100, that's the percent of the anhydrous compound. But I think it's easiest to start with grams. So you're going to start with 1.610 grams of water. Think about your two parts. Okay, you have your two parts. One part of the hydrate's water. The other part is Na2CO3. So you have 0.948 grams of Na2CO3. Remember, I'm not actually going to use this 2.558 grams in this part, because that's the whole thing. That's the hydrate. I want to think of the parts. Just like when you found the percent composition by mass, you dealt with like the part C, the part O, if it's CO2. Well now, if we have a hydrate, one part's water, and the other part is your Na2CO3 in this example. So I'm going to convert from grams to moles for each of these. So I want you to try to figure this out, think about the molar mass of each of these, and convert from grams to moles. So pause it now and do that. So here's what you should have gotten. 1.610 grams of water, divide by 18.02. 18.02 grams per mole is the molar mass of water. So take that, divide by 18.02, and you should get this many moles of water. Now for Na2CO3, sodium carbonate, you should take 0.948 grams. Divide by 105.99, you may have rounded it to 106 grams per mole. That's the molar mass of Na2CO3. And then you should get this many moles of Na2CO3 of sodium carbonate. Now if you remember from the previous lesson, once you get the number of moles, you divide by the smallest number of moles. So which one's smaller? Hopefully you can figure out that's this one. So 0.008944, okay, divide by that would be 1, right? And then we're going to take this one and divide by 0.008944, okay? So now I'll show you what we're going to get. So the formula, we're looking for Na2CO3 times XH2O. Okay, so you'll notice when I divide 0 0.008944 divided by 0 0.008944 equals 1, right? So that's showing that we have one mole of Na2CO3, okay? And that's true, because right here, there's an invisible 1 there. We have one mole of Na2CO3. Now, when you divide 0 0.08935 divided by 0 0.008944, you get 10... Point oh oh. Okay, thinking about number of sig figs, we have four sig figs in this number, the 8, 9, 3, and 5, and we have four in this number, the 8, 9, 4, and 4. Okay, notice the zeros here, there's about a 10 difference by a factor of 10, so when we divide them, we get 10.00 that also has four sig figs in it. So that's, if we have one mole of water, that's how many moles of H2O we have. So x here, then, is going to be 10, okay? So how we write this, our answer is going to be Na2CO3 times 10 H2O. So the problem said, determine the experimental value of x to the correct number of sig figs. That's this 10.00. To the correct number of sig figs, when we divide these, 4 divided by 4 sig figs would be 4 sig figs. 
And then the most likely formula of the hydrate, we're going to take this number and round it. Obviously, 10.00, pretty easy to round, rounds to 10. And so when asked for the most likely formula of the hydrate, that's this. This is our formula, formula of the hydrate for this problem. Nice job, class.